When you're trading for monthly gaps and not seeing any results, you might ask yourself, do these gaps actually work? Well, the answer might surprise you. To find out if the Favaldi gaps actually work, we need to put it to the test. I have a five-step process that I use to determine whether a trading concept truly holds up. If the concept passes all five steps, it's an a concept, but if only passes one, it's an F. Today, we're going to apply that process to Favaldi gaps and see if they really work. The first step is the easiest and also one of the most important ones. So when we put a concept to the test, it has to be simple and easy to understand or else it isn't really a good concept. But how do we determine if a concept is simple or not? Well, if we look at this Favaldi gap right here, we can see it is pretty easy to identify, as Favaldi gaps are only made of free candles. And whenever price makes a retracement up to the Favaldi gap, we would like to see price move lower again. So that's pretty simple, right? But another thing that goes under the first step is can it be traded with an expansion phase? And that basically means when price is trading lower with a fast pace, the price action then offer Favaldi gaps. And most of the time, as we can see right here, price offer Favaldi gaps within this bearish expansion leg. But it's not every time that price makes a retracement or even respects the Favaldi gap. And that we will get into later in the video. So now that we have gone over the easiest step, we can move over to the next step where most concepts struggle. And it is the risk reward ratio. Here's how we run the test. We will look at Favaldi gaps that have performed well during the AM session and break down what the average risk reward ratio would have been if we had entered on those trades. And as you can see right here, I've identified four Favaldi gaps in this AM session that worked out, three on the one minute time frame and one on the two minute time frame. But this is where things get interesting. Each Favaldi gap represents its own trade, meaning every gap would have different take profit levels and varying sizes. So what we're going to do is set our stop loss at least one X the size of the Favaldi gap beneath or above it. This way, when price reaches that point, we know the Favaldi gap has been invalidated and will aim for the closest internal range liquidity to keep things simple. If the fair Favaldi gap wants to pass this test, it needs its average risk score ratio to be above 2. Now let's analyze this AM session. So to start off with the first Favaldi gap, I put the stop loss at 2 times the size of the Favaldi gap above the current entry and targeted internal range liquidity. And this made a decent risk score ratio of about 1.16, but this is nearly good enough to beat the average risk score ratio of about 2. Now let's move down to the next about the gap. So as we can see, I pretty much did the same thing. I put the stop loss at 2 times the size of the probability gap above the current entry and targeted internal range liquidity. And this made a way better risk reward ratio, beating the average to risk reward ratio. And this was about 3.76. Now let's move further down. So this probability gap right here is on the 2 minute time frame. And I will go over it when we have done the last probability gap down here. So as we can see, I pretty much did the same thing, but it was a bit different. As I targeted internal range liquidity, but I put the stop loss way above just two times the size of the Favaldi gap above the current entry price. And that is because this Favaldi gap is very small. And when it's that small, price could easily just wick above it and still respect it and then start to move lower, reaching internal range liquidity. So I put about 5x the size of the Favaldi gap above the current entry to make it fair, but that still made a very good risk reward ratio of about 3.7, beating the two risk reward ratio. Here in the two minute time frame, I pretty much did the same thing as I did on the first and second Favaldi gap. I put the stop loss at two times the size of the Favaldi gap above the current entry price and targeted internal range liquidity. And we can see price almost stopped this trade entry out, but then went in the bearish favor. And this made a remarkable risk score ratio of about 4.14, beating the average risk score ratio at 2x. So the average risk score ratio for all these trades during the AN session was 3.2, beating the test with about 1.2 risk score ratio, which is very nice. Next up for the Favaldi gap is the holding time and the premium slayers discount test. In this phase, we'll see how long if Favaldi gap is going to hold from the delivery, and this we're going to look at on the higher time frame for bias and on trade entries. Then after that, we will look at how often the Favaldi gap gets respected when it appears within either a discount or a premium of the range. This will show us how often price respects this concept and if the market utilizes Favaldi gaps as an important delivery. To start off, we will look at the holding time. 
so I found a bunch of significant Fivaldi gaps and random Fivaldi gaps, where we will look at how long the Fivaldi gap lasts after its first retracement. And if it is above 20 days, it has passed, but if it is below, then it has failed. And as we can see right here, the first Fivaldi gap's holding time is about 4 days, meaning it has failed. The next one's holding time is 61 days, meaning it has passed. Then 8 days, it has failed. 60 days, passed. 32 days, it has passed, of course. 26 days after the first retracement, meaning it has passed. Then we get up here, only 3 days, meaning it has failed. And again, 15 days, meaning it has failed from its first retracement. So the average of all these Valdi gaps is about 26 days, meaning the Favaldi gap has passed the holding time on the higher time frame for bias. And if we were to do it on the lower time frame, it is not going to be as accurate on the daily time frame because there's a bunch of more Favaldi gaps on the lower time frame and there's a lot which is not that significant. So I'm going to leave out the lower time frame for another time in the future. Now for the premium slash this contest, we will go over three Favaldi gaps within the AM session that has been within the premium slash discount of the range to see if the market really do respect these Favaldi gaps. And the first one we can see right here, it follows the bias, which is another criteria, the bias from the bearish London session going into the New York session. And then it of course has to be within a premium slash discount from the AM high to the low, as you can see from this high all the way down to the AM low and has to get respected at least two out of three Fibonacci gaps to pass the test. And as we can see right here, price reached up into this premium of this range, and within the premium, there's located a Fibonacci gap. But we can see price disrespected this Fibonacci gap, meaning it closed above it. So that also means price has failed one out of three of the Fibonacci gaps. The next Vivaldi gap, we can see it has to be a bearish one because at the moment price action is bearish and we have to follow the bias. And we're of course going to mark out our premium slash discount range from the AM high all the way down to low to determine the premium and discount. And if this Vivaldi gap fails or these two Vivaldi gaps fail, then the Vivaldi gap has failed this test. And the reason I have marked out two Vivaldi gaps is because both of these Vivaldi gaps are within a premium and this Vivaldi gap has already been disrespected. So let's see what's going to happen. And as we can see, price disrespect these two Vivaldi gaps, meaning price has failed this test. Now, I do want to say that this is just an overall Fibonacci gap test. There's, of course, also several other factors to why prices is moving higher or lower from the Fibonacci gaps examples that I've showed you guys so far within this video. So, price passed the whole thing time, but it failed the premium slash discount test. So, I'm going to give this a medium grade, meaning it has passed, but just barely. Now this fourth step is definitely the hardest one for a concept to pass, because each concept usually can't be traded individually on its own. So that is what we're going to put the Fibonacci gap to the test. Now the way we're going to do that is by looking at an AM session where we know the bias and we can use premium slash discounts to our advantage as they are technically not a concept. So basically it's a bit like the premium slash discount test, just where we have a much more clear bias. So here on the daily time frame, we can see that price traded within a fair value gap, so we could see price move higher from now, but we also do have to keep in mind that price closed beneath previous day's low, but we also have equal highs up here, so the bias is leading more to the bullish side. Here on the 4 hour time frame, we can see that price created equal highs, or more like triple equal highs actually, because we can see that this high in here does not overlap this high right here. But if we look more over to the left, we can also see that price created a fair value gap. But price have already closed above the consequent encouragement and have reached this value gap several times. So it doesn't really look like it's a significant fair value gap. So we could be anticipating price to be bullish during this AM session. And on the one hour time frame, we can also see that price have already reached the London lows and the London highs is part of the equal highs. So pretty much here, it would make sense for price to move higher, reaching our significant draw on liquidity up here. So the bias for the AM session is bullish. 
Now we can see here on the one minute time frame the price moved down into that daily fair value gap. So now we could be anticipating price to move higher and reach yesterday's AM session and the equal highs that we also created from the previous day. So now let's just zoom in again and see what price action wants to do. And we can see right here at 9.30, price is just rallying higher. And now we can actually start to look for the fair value gaps. And if we mark out the discount and premium of this range within here, we can see at the moment price have reached down within a discount of this dealing range, or more likely this value gap within here. So let's see if price wants to move higher from this Vivaldi gap or even this Vivaldi gap all the way down here and potentially reach the equal highs or at least just this AM high right here. And we can see right here at the moment, price is using this Vivaldi gap as support to push price higher and price reached the AM high, as we can see right here. So basically, for this fourth step, the Favelli gap passed the test. This last and final step should be pretty easy to pass. Now the fair value gap we saw was pretty good by itself. So to make it even better, we can use a model with it. So basically we're going to look at if the Favelli gap has any models and it does have a lot of models with it, such as the silver bullet, unicorn model, etc. So the Favelli gap definitely passed this last step. So basically, the Favaldi gap passed four and a half out of five steps, which is really good. And that also means I will give it an A, meaning this concept definitely works. But if you want to use this Favaldi gap with any of the models I talked about or create your own, I would recommend watching either one of these two videos.